the objective of this week's video is going to be a little bit different. I got pretty much all the major canola reps to come in this week and uh, go over in quick video format of their varieties that they're recommending for you to grow this year and uh, just give a quick rundown on each one of those. So let's go ahead and we'll get started right into terminology. Alright, so first off we've got True Flex. True Flex is going to be 0.67 liters of glyphosate sprayed two times up to first flower or a single 1.33 liter application once up to the six leaf stage. That will give us good control on the hard to kill perennial weeds. Next we got Liberty Link. That's going to be your uh, two 1.33 liter applications or one 1.67 liter application. Then we got Roundup, or RR, which is your old standard for Roundup Ready, and that's 0.33 liters of glyphosate twice. Then we've got SC, which generally stands for straight cut. Now every company has a little bit different genetics, they're not all the same, so you need to uh, talk to a retail agronomist or your agronomist to determine what's, which one's going to be best for you. And then we have the others. So BL stands for black leg resistant, and there's multiple strains of that, as well as C for club root, multiple strains of that as well. Not all of them are resistant to the strain that you might have. Okay, I'm here today with Garrett Cowan from Bayer, and he's gonna talk about his canola varieties for the 2020 season. Right on, thanks Lyle. Um, yeah, so Garrett Cowan, territory sales manager with Bayer. Uh, I just wanna talk about some of the, the new varieties that we have at DeKalb for the 2020 season. So we'll start with um, our new TrueFlex variety, so DKTF96SC. So that's our, uh, our third generation straight cut that we're bringing to the market and our second generation TrueFlex. So last year we brought out 92SC and this year we're bringing out 96SC. So uh, new and improved, a little bit shorter in maturity and uh, nice standability and, and good yield potential. So that would be my TrueFlex recommendation. Also down here for Southern Alberta, DKLL82SC, so the LL stands for Liberty Link, and the SC stands for Straight Cut. So that's uh, that's our first Liberty Link variety in the Straight Cut uh, marketplace. So I had a bunch of trials down here in Southern Alberta this past year. Very happy with the results. So that's one that I'm leading with in our Liberty Link market. Uh, and then we have a stack option for anyone that's interested. So something that's tolerant to both Roundup and Liberty Link. So it's DKTFLL21SC. So that's our first entry into the dual trait market. So um, lots of opportunity here to look at some new genetics and see really what we're looking at. Uh, tolerant to both um, the Liberty rates and the high TrueFlex rates. So a really good option for cleaning up your fields and uh, just looking at some different ways to, to manage some different weeds on the farm. And then obviously our, another option we have in our portfolio, some of our uh, RT73, so our original Roundup Ready, uh, definitely a favorite of ours, 7444 and 7565. So still available in our portfolio. So lots of choices and uh, happy to assist you with anything. All right, thank you, Garrett. Okay, this morning I'm at the Corteva Research Station with Brent and he's gonna tell you about their hybrid lineup for 2020. Hi, I'm Brent Nielsen. I'm the Lethbridge Territory Manager for Corteva AgriScience. Uh, Corteva AgriScience is the merged company of uh, Dow and DuPont. Uh, now we are strictly purely agriculture company, which is really exciting uh, to come to the marketplace as being a, a standalone ag company. Uh, so I'm really excited about it. I think uh, a lot of the customers are really excited about having that offer now in the marketplace. Uh, nice thing about uh, Corteva is we can really combine uh, uh, the Cor Dow and DuPont's crop protection and seed and we're going to have a lot of exciting things coming in the future. Um, right now, we are going to be offering two seed lineups, our Pioneer, which is through a rep channel system in Vermont, uh, which is available through your local retail. Uh, I represent the Corteva's crop protection and the Vermont seed lineup. Uh, Vermont is a new name to the seed market, but it is still backed with uh, the, our heritage companies that have 30 years of experience in the hybrid uh, canola seed business. Uh, the next thing we're going to be adding eventually to our naming system, we bring out a new hybrid for next era. It will be an N, so N for next era. Um, what's unique about this, the next era hybrids are their high omega nine contact, and um, what uh, customers like about this oil is that it is a healthier oil. There's no stabilizers are added to it like regular commodity canola oil. And the other, the really big selling feature is that uh, the customers are able to get twice the frying life out of that product. So that really tracks them and they're willing to pay a premium for that 
of that uh, oil. Um, some hybrids for that lineup uh, is for the Roundup Ready segment is 1028. Uh, 1028 is going to be our highest yielding uh, hybrid. Uh, it is a mid to long season hybrid, uh, so keep that in mind. I always tell my uh, farmers in the area, plant your next era first, and it's probably going to be the last one you harvest. Uh, and that just kind of helps mitigate your risk a little and you don't get flowering in the, the heat of the summer because uh, it will be typically a week later flowering than your other hybrids in the area. Um, it also has a good black leg resistant package and a club root resistant package and that's going to be standard offering from Corteva uh, going forward. Um, for the Clearfield segment, uh, we are going to be offering, my hybrid of choice will be the 2028. Again, this was introduced last year. It's been our highest yielding. Uh, it's still a mid to long season hybrid, like 1028, although it is improving both the 1028 and 2028 on uh, days to maturity compared to our old next era hybrids. Uh, the, it is also gonna be a black leg resistant package and a club root resistant hybrid. So uh, excited to have those two hybrids. They've been performing very well in this the Lethbridge area. Uh, unfortunately, both of them do not have our Harvest Max trait, our, our pod chatter reduction trait. Uh, so you won't be able to straight cut these hybrids and you'll have to swap them. Uh, as far as contracts go, uh, we have many partners in that. Uh, Louis Dreyfus is offering a really good premium on their uh, hybrid or Vermont hybrids for next era contracts. And Viterra is also offering uh, contracts as well. Uh, Louis Dreyfus is going to have contracts for both Roundup and Clearfield. And Viterra will have contracts for their Clearfield, for Clearfield lineup. Uh, they're going a little bit different route to market with theirs. Um, talk to your Viterra or Louis Dreyfus elevators for further details on those contracts. And then talk with your retail about uh, which hybrid uh, is best for your farm. And Paige Newton from Cantera Seeds is in the office, so we'll let her talk about canola varieties for this year. Hello everyone, uh, thanks for letting me join you Lyle. I really do enjoy your uh, YouTube videos and uh, if you're not already following Lyle on Twitter, you should. <laughs> anyway, uh, Lyle's asked me to talk about seed treatments. Cantera Seeds, uh, we have two canola varieties that do perform very, very well here in Southern Alberta. Uh, we have CS2100, which is a uh, standby. Uh, it's performed very well down here. It's straight cut and roundup ready. We also have a new offering for 2020. We've got CS2600 CRT. Uh, it is early, straight cut, true flex, and club root resistant. So uh, we're excited about that one. As far as seed treatment options for these varieties, we have two. We work with Syngenta. Uh, we have Helix Vibrance as our base treatment, or if you need to or want to step up your game, we also have Fertenza Advance. Fertenza Advance has Fertenza in the formulation, which uh, provides better uh, cutworm, well, it's a cutworm product. And it, it also is, uh, the Fertenza Advanced is a package that helps with flea beetle control, especially striped flea beetles. Uh, so, and then it's also got a better uh, disease package. So uh, a couple of options uh, when it comes to our seed varieties. We've got some deadlines coming up. So uh, I know you've had a difficult harvest and might not be quite ready to talk about seed for 2020. Uh, but there are some deadlines coming up, so hopefully uh, the folks at AgroPlus can help you out. Thanks, and have a great day in Ag. Thank you, Paige. Thank you. Okay, I'm here today with Ryan Croker, and he's going to tell us about the Pioneer Hybrid lineup for 2020. Hey, yeah. thanks, Lyle. Appreciate the time. Um, you know, 2019 was an exciting time for, for Pioneer Hybrid and the canola portfolio, where we got to introduce our first Liberty Link Hybrid into the marketplace. And that, uh, that hybrid was P501L. So P501L, uh, full club root package, full black leg package, and great, great yield potential based on what we've seen um, with large side-by-side -side trials in Southern Alberta this past year. So that'll be our primary Liberty Link hybrid that's available on the market in 2020 here. Um, my territory that's covers Southern Alberta, Public Highway 1 South, had about 90 side-by-sides uh, of this in this past year. Um, to date, I've got about 32 that have uh, been completed with good data and good analysis that have come back my way. Across those 32, we've seen a yield bump of about half a bushel an acre, and that's across multiple harvest forms and then multiple hybrids as well. Um, when we break that down a little bit, of those 32, 18 were, uh, were straight cut and 14 were swath. 
So it doesn't have our harvest max designation, um, which is our trait for increased pod drop and increase or decreased pod drop and decreased shattering, sorry. Um, but we did see some growers straight cut it this year, a little more shattering than, uh, than the, some of the, the, the competitor hybrids, but the yield made up for it. So when it was straight cut, you know, it was about a wash when it came down to yields. And then we had 14 trials off to dates on, on swath and uh, that was about a two bushel increase just from the local data that we've got down here in southern Alberta. So some good results, um, trending in the right direction, very encouraging. And now, you know, you guys, uh, growers have a, another option to, uh, to grow a Liberty Link hybrid. Um, we're in the past traditionally haven't been able to. So happy to, happy with the results that came this, this year off of the 501, happy with what it's going to do in the future. And then we have a second um, Liberty Link hybrid that's going to be part of our portfolio this year. Um, it's not named yet. It's going to be uh, hopefully released here December, January. Uh, that's where we're pending registration. To date, it looks like everything's in place for that, uh, that timeline to make it happen. But uh, that's going to be <coughs> a Liberty Link hybrid that has our Harvest Max trait bred into it. So we'll have our 501 and then our Harvest Max Liberty Link that gives growers um, whichever option they choose to go with, whether that Harvest Max or non Harvest Max there. So um, stay tuned on that. It'll be a soft launch for the 2020 season. You know, just a few hundred bags down here in Southern Alberta likely. But again, want to put it beside our competition, see how it performs, see how it, uh, see how it can straight cut. And that's, that's really the main fit for that, uh, for that product down here. Um, on the Roundup side, 45M35 has really been the consistent workhorse in Southern Alberta for the last two or three years. You know, it's consistently out yielded, consistently been a great straight cut option uh, versus any competitor that's gone up events. And, and uh, guys have been really, really happy with it. Um, it was the number one yielding Roundup Ready hybrid in 2018 and 2019 in the Canola Council data, which, uh, which shows us consistency year over year. And uh, <clears throat> again, that's been the one that's been the most proven, most consistent, and that growers have really uh, fell in love with down here in the Pioneer portfolio. Our other main hybrid that, that fits this geography would be 45 CM39. Uh, anytime you see a C in our um, in our nomenclature in our lineup, that designates club root resistance. So it is a good club root resistant uh, hybrid, as well it has that M in there, which is our harvest max trait for again uh, reduced shatter and reduced pod job traits, making it a great straight cut option. So again, both M35 and CM39 have that trait bred right into it. We have not seen a drag in yield when we've put in a club root, club root trait. You know, there's been some other hybrids and some other companies that have had that over the years. We haven't. So on, on 45 CM39, we saw, you know, basically on par within a bushel and then some trials going above 45 M35 yield. So that's very encouraging to see. You know, we're not in the position where we have to, you know, consider a yield drag just to put the club root genetics in. Any new hybrid that comes out in the Pioneer hybrid lineup moving forward will have a club root package uh, bred into it. Again, because we, we have not seen that yield drop that, uh, that some other competitors have. So that's exciting. We want to be on the forefront of uh, club root resistance. You know, we want to take it as preventative measures as much as we can. So I'm sure when we talk to some, you know, some producers up in that little dude care at Edmonton area, you know, they could say one thing to us and what they have said to us is, you know, prevention is key. Once that, uh, once club root is prevalent down here, it's very tough to get rid of. We're happy with our, with our club root genetic packages. And uh, again, every hybrid coming out from here on out with, in Pioneer will have that club root genetic package built into it. So um, yeah, those are the main four that we'll be running with here in, in 2020. Uh, there are obviously others in the portfolio. Any questions whatsoever, talk to your local Pioneer agents and uh, they can give you that local experience and local expertise, what they've seen in the portfolio. Thanks. Thank you, Ryan. Okay, I was not able to get a BSF representative to meet with me this week to record this, so I'm going to do it for them. So, for BSF, for the three leading varieties we're going to be promoting this year, we're going to be looking at L252. Uh, I, I like that variety, especially on irrigation as a swathing variety. It yields very well and it stands really nice. Um, very good maturity level as well. Um, other than that, we got L233P, which is basically the variety to beat for pod shatter. Good disease resistance, stands really well, performs well on both dry land and on irrigation. And this year we have the new one, the L345, so that's going to yield about as high as the L252. 
um, but it also has good black blade resistance and first generation club root resistance built into it as well as the pod shatter technology. So that's going to be on a limited basis this year so if that's a variety you're interested in trying let us know sooner rather than later. So here's something I was able to pull off of Farmer's Edge. So this is an 800 mile circle around Lethbridge and this is all of the recorded canola fields. So this does not do a breakdown whether it was irrigated or dry land so you have to take these numbers really with a grain of salt. Some of these varieties you know like the 7542 and the L140P they're older varieties they're more likely to be sold at a discount and grown on dry land so that's what I would say the L140 was here because I would normally I would say that's a fairly well yielding canola you'll also see the next era are all down here uh, that's fairly normal for next era it does have really good potential but it uh, doesn't seem to do very good in drought years on dry land and uh, you'll see some of the, the newer DeKalb hybrids are in here as well uh, here's a good one here, did 41 bushel average on the 92 SC, 7565 is right there with it. Uh, here we got uh, some 45 M35 at 43 bushels, 112 fields. Uh, here it is again, 5 fields did 43. Uh, we got a little bit of Brett Young in here. Uh, there's L252, 46 bushels, 501, 46 bushels, 45 CM39 did 49 bushels. And over here where it was mislabeled as 45 M39, it was uh, second best at 52 and uh, yeah 233p five fields here did 49 and uh, the overall winner according to farmers edge was 6074 which is a Brett Young variety there was only 31 fields but it averaged 53 bushels so that might have been an irrigation heavy variety but uh, don't know the details on that so can't really speak to that but one thing I will say is pretty much all these varieties it doesn't matter who makes them all of them have a genetic potential for well over 100 bushels. What really counts is how well they handle stress. So when it comes down to varieties that don't handle drought very well, you know, looking at you there next era, or uh, you know, other management issues as well, you know, it all comes down to management, how much manure, how much fertility, how much water is going to dictate your yield more than variety selection probably will. So I hope this is uh, of some use to you. I would not necessarily say that this is anything definitive, but this is, you know, results straight off farm. And uh, I will put some sources below that you can go and you can look at uh, yields online as well. I hope this was of some use to you in uh, selecting the right canola hybrid for your farm. If you have any questions or you want to go more in, into depth on any of these varieties, give us a call. We'll help, help you uh, select the right variety for your farm anytime. And uh, yeah, that'll be all for now, so like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week.